All right, that feels awkward. Um, hi everyone. Oh, and here I am with a coffee stain on my shirt. Okay. Okay, all right, it's official. I will, I shall wash my hair and put myself together to look like a human being. I'll be right back. For you, it's gonna be just, here we go. Better? Should I get closer? Okay, I'll get closer. Maybe you'll heal me better then. How's that? How's that? How are you? I missed you guys. I sure did. It's been, it's been a minute. It's been a minute since we talked. So a few bottles, if you're like, like, you know, stalker material, like if you feel like the ambition to ever know every single bottle that your favorite um, fragrance reviewer has, you might have seen some of these, but I decided since, ever since February, a lot of my purchasing activity was, let's face it, pure emotional spending with a few targeted purchases of things that I wanted for years. But even the fact of buying them was kind of an emotional purchase because it was like, oh, you know, the world may end tomorrow. Here I am, yeah. Not only that, but also I've been buying perfumes I would like unbox them temporarily, you know, like do a few sprays and put them back in the box because I was adamant I shouldn't put them on the shelf before I tell you about it. That's pretty much every blogger in the universe. And I acquired a pile, I kid you not, a pile of boxes and the perfumes that I wore like once, twice, and I almost feel like I have no access to because I can't put them back on my olfactory library shelves. So I'm finally cleaning up this room and I absolutely have, I, it, something has to change because to have some of these bottles I've had for three, four months and they didn't, still don't feel like I have them. So I'm going to show you what I got. I'm going to finally unbox everything, finally put them on the shelves, make those little cool collections that I do if you're interested in to see what my perfume library looks like right now, what kind of themes and how I group things, how I store perfumes, let me know in the comments down below. Looking forward to it and I'll finally, finally have it all in there and I'll get rid of all the boxes. Keeping boxes is not really my thing. In very rare circumstances, if I can repurpose them, I do. That said, some of these beauties are packaged to the nines. So I wanted to show you what are you getting for your top buck because some of them are not not cheap. Like most of them are not cheap. Let's just face let's face it. So we'll talk about why, what, how they package. Is it worth the price tag? All that good stuff. I would like to start from my usual. Papalooza of purchases from Sunbird and actually some of them were uh, my subscriptions and some of them kind of the resales that I found on Mercari. I, for some reason I feel like it's almost, it, it used to be kind of like a trend to hate on Sunbird. I don't know why, Maybe, like I'm sure they made a number of customer experience mistakes. My personal experience with them was always super positive that said, I was never sponsored, I'm not affiliated with them in any kind. But when it comes to sampling really cool, both like new hip niche and well-established beloved niche fragrances, I find them to be one of the best in terms of this like Instagram worthy type of brands, right? They invest enough, enough energy and money into being kind of like hip young and truly brand-like, unless in contrast to me, right? Like if I was selling, I was selling decants at some point. And if you want to like any sample from my collection so you can support what I do, you know, like you want to try something from specific bottles that you see here in, more than welcome. I do have a little store on eBay, a little store in Mercari. That said, right, like it's, it's, it's almost like buying from a friend. It has its own perks, but if you want to buy from a business, like you're going to Uniqlo or this or that, I find that Sandbird really knows what they're doing. 
So I've been a faithful customer for probably four years or more now. And I really love that with every purchase, they send you a card with a description of notes and what the fragrance looks like. So I've been, I probably ordered at this point close to 100 uh, decants from them. And the few that I just want to talk about, some of them are like already finished, as you'll see. Oh, here it is. Um, one brand that kind of keeps popping up here and there, and I mainly learned about it through the Sandbird, actually, as a kind of marketing channel. This is Veronique Goodbye, and the newer fragrance that I got from them was called Sexy Garrigue. Completely finished it within just a few months, and that's kind of becoming a trend between my perfume usage, my, my kind of relationship with Veronique Goodbye as a brand. I am yet to buy a full-size bottle, even though I absolutely love the packaging. I haven't held them in, in my hand to actually evaluate the quality of the glass and the, the band, you know, all of the details. But at least in pictures, I dig it. I absolutely dig the aesthetic. It's very as the golden years of Estee Lauder. In my mind, it's like hard luxury. It's very kind of esteemed, polished, and yet it doesn't have that cheapening Instagram influencer feel that a lot of other brands have these days. So it's a very fine line to walk because it's almost balancing between, oh, you know, it's so 2003 in, in terms of styling versus, you know, oh, like it's yet another XYZ you know, that you can see on social media. So they're trying to walk that fine line, and when it comes to their factory design, it also feels like they're, they're so wearable, and yet they're so friendly. This is, I would say, one of the best brands to start departing from the usual designer brands. Designer brands, every once in a while, have like some unique gems here and there and we can talk about it in the next video if you, if you want me to leave a comment below but if you just want to make a step out of your comfort zone of angel mugler you know like or any of those daisy by mark jacobs or any of those like top shelf narcissa rodriguez and such and such Veronique goodbye offers this very friendly departure toward niche that said me being kind of one of those far gone <laughs> perfume lovers, right? Like my, my story with perfume goes so many years and my collection is so diverse and so this point pedigreed that it takes something, 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 something for me to buy a bottle of perfume. It doesn't have to be the most sophisticated or unusual scent, but it's just, it, Let's just say, I love Ernie Goodbye as a brand. I always use up their decants first, but I'm yet to buy a full-size bottle. So there's a little bit of a dichotomy there that I yet, I can't explain. All of the Ernie Goodbye scents, I told you, I bought them and I used them up within three months. Haven't gotten a single bottle. Sexy Garig to me is this kind of perky with a little bit of this like refreshing sour note. That as I receive it, I don't feel like it's very Christmas tree like was it Alep trees. I don't feel much of that uh, pine or woody sense. I don't feel dark or caramel like ambers, but it's it's a sensual soft amber with a little bit of a kind of refreshing. I wouldn't say lemonade. It doesn't. It doesn't have any lemony notes that I can rec recall, but this kind of fizzy, a little bit of a fizzy, refreshing, somewhat sweet, sour opening that then lands in this very respectful, uh, very well-mannered, soft amber. And this is probably why I use them up so quickly. And yet, once I was done with it, again, a lot of compliments received with the Sexy Garig. I just couldn't quite, it didn't grab me. It didn't make me fall in love with it, but it's something that is perfect as a travel size. I know that Bernie Gabay has uh, these like jewelry shaped travel sizes. That might be, that might be something that um, actually works better. Here's another three. Uh, Holy Rose, let me find the cards. I got it. 
Do I have it here? If I do. Uh, I got it from a friend here on YouTube, coincidentally. Uh, but I bought it from Mercari. Holly Rose. Got it as a set of four from somebody who's reselling their um, Sandberg decants on Mercari. And I've been slowly warming up to room 1015, uh, or how you call it, 1015. Room 1015, I'll call it. And again, with Veronica Bai, for example, it's almost instant like, but it's yet to be a love kind of situation. With room 1015, I was like, oh, they're too kitschy, you know, like they're just trying to like ride on the shock value. But the more I wear them, the more I fall in love with them. So this is kind of like a very slow burn type of uh, love affair. And I, it started with Cherry Punk, that at first I was like, okay, yet another clone of Tom Ford Lost Cherry. And yet I do like the leathery and scotch-like accords with these cherry that they present in Cherry Punk way more than I like Lost Cherry by Tom Ford. And at this point, as soon as I'm done with that one, like it's on my wish list. Cherry Punk is like strongly up there on my wish list. Holy Rose was something I really wanted to try. The ideal morning rose, the ideal evening rose, the ideal like gothic rose, it's, it's a search, you know, it's a lifelong search essentially. And I wanted to see what they had to offer because Holy Rose by Room 10.5 um, claimed to have Rose Absolute, Black Currant, Tuscan Leather, Patchouli and Black Pepper. I'm a big fan of Tuscan leather, black pepper, patchouli kind of depends how you wrap it. And I've been for a while trying to find a realistic, aromatic black currant scent. So, I got it almost full and I used up, I don't know if you can see it, nearly, probably 4 mil just in the last month. It is the black currant jam rather than the leaves. The rose here is beautiful, but not too candy-like. I'm still confused where the aspect of pepper, because I, I tend to recognize it fairly well, I think. I don't find the spiciness here as much. But when it comes to m blending leathery accents with patchouli and all that good stuff, it's neither peppery to me, nor leathery. Patchouli, eh, maybe. But what it actually makes me think of is this combination of incense and myrrh together. So to me, this is a somewhat incense rose, but not the sour kind of Catholic church incense, but something much warmer with myrrh and like frankincense and like all that good stuff. So imagine like a sweet, but not too candy-like rose that blends with fresh, ripe blackcurrant berries, like really sweet ones, and then wrapped with this kind of somewhat incense myrrh, frankincense accord as well. That's how it registers for me. And I fell in love with it from the first spray. This is why I use it so much. That said, when I used it up, because <clears throat> coincidentally, not only I bought it on Mercari, I forgot it was in my queue on Sandbird. So now I have two. That's half of a bottle. That's 16 mil. That's quite enough for me to have a long lasting love affair with Holy Rose and see if that if that really transfers into like a full-size bottle. But so far in love with it, but that aspect kind of, I'm not a big fan of myrrh, I think that's what it is. It's cool, but every once in a while it gets smothering to my nose. Do you have that? Does it ever happen to you? I wonder. The next one is the Harmonist Metal Flower. I've tried, probably five different scents by the Harmonist by now. And to me, it's yet another brand that's like way more expensive. I actually don't know, I 
think Harman, Harmonist, I think, is more expensive than Veronica Bay, but to me, they are very similar. They always make this very comfortable to wear scents that have niche quality, but are not quite niche. It's this, like, they're really trying to balance wearability, ease of understanding, kind of this, like, acquiring compliments type of quality, when it's not too complex, not too complex, not too easy, not too generic, but not too edgy either. And Metal Flower is pretty much another example of that. If you're like tired of Lancome Idole or like Lancome Miracle or any of those fresh, sour, sweet, rosy kind of perfumes, Metal Flower is a delightful departure into something more unique but still very comfortable. It's like, you know, that it's like that hundred dollar cashmere sweater. If you're used to buying things like for 30 bucks, then it's like, all right, I'll buy something for 60. And every once in a while, is like 150, and it's like, should I, should I not? That will be the Harmonist as a brand. So Metal Flower is, as far as I see, unapologetically, semi-synthetic because they are going for these kind of very contemporary I don't want to say Instagram influencer but that kind of look like Gen Z I guess it's delicate yet deft it's dazzling yin scent okay they're into that kind of stuff uh, that charms and motivates a giant a uh, glint of light bouncing of a burnished sur surface. That's the kind of effect it should give. To me, it's a refreshing, ever so slightly soapy, sour, sweet, rosy scent. Rosoxide, so this is like a synthetic accord. Orange blossom, rose of May, patchouli, white masks. I think the only things that we need to remember, it's like white, like clean, this kind of somewhat soapy white masks mixed with not too sour, not too sharp, kind of very your, like your, your favorite shampoo type of rose. It's cool. It's cool, it's gonna wear well in the heat. That said, just like Veronique Goodbye, I feel like I'll use it up, I'll enjoy it, and I don't quite see myself buying a full bottle. Not just yet. All right, what else do we have here? Okay, this is my backup because I'm yet to be able to find a full-size bottle. This is Atelier Bloem. Okay, this is where I get a little uh, eyebrow. I adore their perfumes. I feel that Atelier Bloem makes the most exquisite yet light they are not like loaded with pedigree. It's like this effortless 16 year old beauty when like no, no matter what that girl puts on, it just looks good on her. And it's always this combination of energy, vibrancy, yet, yet at least kind of like delicacy, almost some kind of vulnerability. Their fragrances just have that kind of thinly woven quality in them. And the one that started my love for Atelier Bloem is Extraordinary Tulip. I found a bottle of atel every Atelier Bloem in the US market for a good discount, except for this one. Not this one. Everything else, yes, not this one. So I keep just acquiring travel size backups. I already used up eight mil before. I'm halfway through my another eight mil that I got from Sandbird, and this is pretty much a backup until I find a full size bottle. This is such a beautiful, elegant green tulip smell. It's one of the best springtime flower scents that I know of. There are many La Tulip by Barreto. There are like many brands that play on the tulip. Not even close. Not even close. I have La Tulip by Barreto, thanks to my subscriber. Not even close. Atelier Bloem, Extraordinary Tulip. That's where the spring 
realistic yet very elegant perfume composition that centers around tulip, that's where it's at. I can foresee this is gonna be a video of several parts. That's all right though. <sighs> Summer is upon us, right? And I decided to revisit this whole notion of mineral fragrances that is firmly now kind of fought, fought very hard to reserve itself a, a place under the sun um, in summer fragrances. There are so many different ways to interpret this salty, mineral, fresh accord that it's almost dizzying at this point. It's a whole new generation of fragrances. They all offer something unique and something rather different. Some of them are like way more almost this rotting and uh, swampy kind of mineral accord. Some of them are a little bit more bitter and vetiver-like. It's, it's, it's a whole world. One of the subsets of mineral like fragrances that I decided to revisit. It's again something that's often is looked down upon in the, in the frag head community and those are fragrances with coconut. After the explosion of you know Bath and Body Works and all those kind of very very cheap how do you say cosmetic chemistry type of uh, flavors that you can find anywhere, can't you name it, candles, shampoos or anything. They kind of ruined a lot of fruity accords, at least to me, and to a lot of people who are more into fine fragrances. It's, it's like there's a difference between a super cheap burger, you know, like a gourmet, like really, really crafted burger. That's the thing. So coconut is one of those accords and fragrance that suffered the most from the cheapening and sort of mass market trends. But uh, my story with coconut kind of restarted, the reset was with clean. Fairly affordable, actually very affordable. And I got their, what was it, body splash. Lasts probably 15 minutes, but it's so delightfully beautiful. The fragrance here is called Clean Sunkissed Skin. So they have clean skin and sunkissed skin has a little bit more of that kind of fresh fruity coconutty accent to it. It's such a comfortable skin mask with coconut flavor added. It's probably the most soothing experience ever, especially if you come back from being out in the hot weather. It's almost like drinking a pina colada itself. Beautiful. That doesn't last very long. It's fairly simple. It's not annoying. It's not too synthetic, if you know what I mean. Like, it still lands very comfortably without too much of nauseating SPF type of smell. But I wanted to explore what a finer niche brands are offering in that regard. And one that a lot of people were buzzing about was by Heretic Dirty Coconut. I think their best sellers are Dirty Coconut and Dirty Vanilla. Haven't tried Dirty Vanilla yet, but I got access to Dirty Coconut. Where is it? Here it is. Let's see. So, this is one of those modern niche brands that is unapologetically synthetic, but they say like, we offer you high chemistry. You know, not that run of the mill, your cheapest bottom shelf, uh, shower gel, but something rather refined. Creamy coconut CO2 blends with sustainably harvested sandalwood, that's what gives you this kind of vanilla milk type of flavor, and warmed vanilla in the sensual masterpiece that strays far from basic beach scents and the saccharine tanning lotions of yesterday year. They pretty much nailed it. Let's just all take a moment and say that people who are developing this PR campaign should be like awarded some kind of medal of recognition for understanding the subtlety uh, here. Sophisticated take on the coconut perfume, Dirty Coconut is a 100% plant-based fragrance that, that's both lusty and renewing. Okay. The Sandalwood here gives a little bit of this grainy, 
I would say somewhat mineral feel that doesn't go salty or oceanic. It just has just, just a little bit of touch of kind of this very dry reclaimed mood, wood scent, but it's not salty. Maybe like a te teeny tiny bit, but like it's one of the least salty beach woody coconut perfumes that I know of. And yet it stays far steer clear of this vanilla and cake type of vanillas that we're used to. I think that's what makes this such a nice understated yet charming perfume because it's a little bit more woody, a little bit more dry and there's only a hint of vanilla milk. It doesn't like punch you in the face with the obvious notes. I really, really dig it. It's, well, this is kind of like a good representation of what's out there already. Like this is probably one of the best yesterday year <laughs> coconut scents, clean sun kiss skin. Uh, this is definitely very today. That said, I don't think it's a new release. I think it's been out for a while. It's just I got into it only recently. And again, it's very in trend. Just so you know, anything with mineral accord is like absolutely like this is popping right now. So any way, any way in which you can tolerate or better enjoy minerality in the perfumes, this is popping. I like it. I'll use it a lot. That said, here is the competitor. Here we go. Here we come. I bought accidentally two of those. One is already in my purse, another one we're I'm gonna show you here. This is a, another beloved brand of mine, Arquiste, which unfortunately still don't own a single bottle of, but I'm trying to hunt them down. They're very hard to find in the United States, at least not for any notion of an affordable price. So, this is Arquiste Sydney Rockpool. I'm in love with the blueness of that bottle. I love blue bottles, especially when they're like opaque and very smoothly crafted. Quite a departure. Even though they kind of reference a lot of similar notes. So we get Mineral Accord with our Kiss Sydney Rockpool, Coconut Skin Accord, mm -hmm. Australian Sandalwood, Sandalwood again, common combination, driftwood, something that I mentioned that I kind of felt I was experiencing here, and Narciss Narcissus. I must say the biggest difference between them, it's this kind of green sharpening Narcissus that combines itself with more salty, a little bit more salt water, Oceanic breeze style type of mineral accord in Sydney Rockpool, while Dirty Coconut keeps it strictly smooth skin type of musk vanilla with this kind of dry, slightly woody coconut. Here we go, we, we jump, we jump 10, 10 feet toward actual mineral, salty, oceanic scents. That said, there is a trace of coconut here. So if you're choosing something where the coconut is more centric, I would go with Dirty Coconut by Heretic. If you're looking for a little bit more edgy, a little bit more contemporary niche, this, this, this is the shit. This is it. And it's a little more floral because I would say Narcissus plays a very key central role here. It's quite recognizable. I love them both, but this is kind of these like after sun care where you just feel in this more quiet, peaceful zone. This is going for a beach walk. It has way more movement, it has more projection. It's a little bit more, let's go do something. But I love them both. Can you tell? <laughs> this is what my summer is gonna be like. 
Yep. This video is quickly turning to be like me gossiping with you about contemporary niche brands, isn't it? And now there are contemporary niche brands that let's just acknowledge things that are not as obvious to some of you. You might not know if you're not in the influencer world. Uh, that was a bit too cool for school for too long until they finally realized they're not gonna make it in the market if they don't kind of like become a little more, a little less of a snobby bitch, a little bit more uh, friendly. And I'm talking about no less than sense of wood. I reached out to them because I was in love with the concept. I reached out to them in the, in the times where they were still doing this, uh, oh, we only accept 2,000, something like that, 2,000 people for a very exclusive subscription box and this and that. How's that working for you, sense of what? Hmm? Made, made your coin with this hyper exclusivity? Just saying, just saying, you gotta be a little more democratic. And they have, they have, they didn't listen to me. I mean, they didn't even reply to me. Didn't even acknowledge my existence, let's just uh, call spade a spade. But now you can find them on Sandbird. Now they are kind of, sort of, maybe, nobody knows if it's true or not. At least acknowledging the fact that all of the frackheads are now on YouTube. Maybe it's not Bella Hadid that you need to talk to, sense of wood. May, may, just maybe. A, a wild, a wild guess. Anyway, can you tell I'm being a little bit salty? Yes, I am. Um, so, I got two cents from them because I really wanted to try them. I was really on board with the idea. They collaborated with a number of very esteemed and forward-looking perfumers. So, I was curious. I also love the design of the bottles, though I've never seen them in person. I got two. Let's start with orange and chestnut. For some reason, I expected that their collection, collection would be way more heavy on the woody notes and spicy notes rather than what it ended up being. Let's talk some more about it. Okay, orange and chestnut. I thought chestnut, orange. I thought it would be orange bitters with like heavy amber woody accord. Nothing of the kind. It's very warm, heated up jasmine with amber. It actually, Veronique Gabay has one that it's very close to it, Tunisian gift, something Tunisian. Um, probably not the most popular reference point, I understand that, let me think, give me, give me a minute, give me a minute. Mugler has a cologne that's very much like this warm, sweet, jasmine plus neroli, these like classical white floral bouquets. And to that matter, we have Serge Luton's Fleurs de Ranger, which upon direct comparison, this is kind of like one of those classic, if you're trying to figure out what's Fleur de Ranger, that's, that's one of the cases where you can pretty much buy a bottle and like use it as a reference for all other Fleur de Ranch fragrances. Way more metallic. The jasmine here has more of this metallic piercing quality. It's like way more direct and kind of narrow. It's not as sweet and fluffy. It's not opening up like a gardenia flower that's facing the heat of the sun. So. The classic Fleur d'Orange is a little bit more put together, a little bit more, I don't want to say stringent, but it's a little bit more piercing, it's a little bit more forceful. These type of new white florals, they are way more mixture of kitchen spices when you're baking a cake of some kind. So they feel very like warm air coming from a kitchen where you're baking something. Yet the basis of scent there is white florals. So this, they give you this like warmed up feeling on the sun. They are not as, they're kind of expanding slowly. Some people even might find them a little bit smothering because of that very quality that they just feel the space kind of like almost swallowing the available air. 
but the same thing kind of makes you feel almost like you kind of fall into the cloud of this sweet romantic white floral heaven I think they delivered on this very well that said I'm way more zeroing in on the base of what they say and I can scarcely detect the opening so the opening here is supposed to be bergamot cedarwood heart of orange flower jasmine and amber at the base a harmonious clash between timeless vitality of orange tree in its exuberant intimacy and the modern umber stretching to the extreme of modernity. I mean, I appreciate the English degree that it took for their marketing intern or whoever wrote this to write this concoction of words. Tells me close to nothing, but sure, sounds beautiful. Sounds beautiful, all the articles and propositions and commas were there. If you're looking for a more gourmand, sweet but not sugary white florals, now that might be a very elegant composition. That said, I feel I've noticed this over, over and over in contemporary niche brands. They take white florals and they depart from the somewhat animalic and metallic quality of jasmine that or, or screechy neroli that is kind of the 80s standard of, of white florals and they make it more of these fluffy pound cake type of uh, white florals but it's good um not sure it's my cup of tea though that's it the second one is called cypress and oak and I got so excited about it because I like cypress and in the in the wet mind-boggling Florida heat I'm all for you know for anything cypressy like anything of that kind including variations cypress and oak by sense of wood Cypress oil, fir, balsam, cedarwood, amber, oak mass. Oh, uh, oak mass, oak moss. Oak mass? What is oak mass? Oak moss, I think. Um, I think it's a typo. You know, I feel way more this kind of fir balsam on paper than I feel on the skin. And I really was waiting for a little bit more of an oak moss than there is there. All in all, I feel I have to wear it on the skin before I can tell you for sure about the complexity of this fragrance. It strikes me a little bit generic. It's good. All these like refreshing and piney accents are there. And yet, I have this strange deja vu that a bottom shelf men colognes might have something just as very close to it or almost exactly like it but like on paper it does has this very beautiful delightful somewhat salty the 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 needles you know the the fur balsam the christmas tree kind of smell which I absolutely adore in all its in, in, in all its forms. We're not even done gossiping about modern niche brands because I have more things to show you. Some came as gifts uh, from my beloved subscribers, some things I bought just to try. So there's gonna be another installation of all kinds of new niche brands that are worth or not worth uh, our consideration and time. That said, let's conclude this part of the haul. I'm very happy with everything I got to try. I haven't even started talking about my purchases, just so you understand the degree of damage. I think in the next one, we'll, I'll show you very expensive and, and more established brands, things that you probably have heard of, or at least seen being kind of hyped um, in the niche market. We'll talk about full bottles. That said, I honestly, the more and more I get into this notion of what's worth a bottle, what's worth a decant, I feel so free 
for some reason to try think and use decants or treble sizes than when I'm committing to a full size bottle, things of this nature. Um, so my bottle purchases, if they are blind purchases, are kind of starting to delight me less, with notable exceptions that I'll show you. And my decant purchases are starting to delight me more. That said, if it's something that I already used at least 16 or 20 mil off, which is a huge commitment in the, like for a frag head, like having like hundreds plus, right, of, of different fragrances, when two years later, essentially, I finally get a bottle of something, it's an explosion of emotions. That said, it worries me that my personal style of sampling and enjoying perfumes might be incompatible with modern marketing and just market terms. Which brand will survive on the market for two, three years before a, a consumer like me who needs years to warm up to a perfume to make a full-size perfume purchase um, will you know, finally converge <laughs> in the marketing terms, through the whole funnel, converge to buying a full-size bottle. Uh, I feel like I'm overridden with guilt, but at the same time, th this is the way I function. So I wanted to pose a question to you. How have you been functioning with perfumes? Are you still like on a blind purchasing kick of like full-size bottles? Are you firmly downsizing? Are you sampling decants? Are you finishing up your decants and at mass? What's going on? Let's catch up. Please let me know how you've been. I've missed you. I've missed you a bunch. I'll be waiting for your feedback. This is the place where we get to enjoy loving the same things together uh, and I'll see you in the next huge installation of my collective perfume haul of 2022. There's so much here that it might might take us a while next, next time as well. That said, thank you so much for watching. If you are curious to hear more about any particular fragrances or brands or kind of families of scents, let me know in the comments below.